Well, praise God. Welcome again. Pastor Jeff, a daily word, capital W. <clears throat> Matthew chapter two. Lord's put it on my heart. I'm going to go, God willing, God willing, huh? Every day, need to say that every hour. <clears throat> God willing, I'm going to go through the book of Matthew. This is the New King James Version. And depending on the timing, I want to keep these around 10 minutes or less. Um, I try to do a, a chapter each day. My recommendation to you is to go to a site like BibleGateway.com for free. You can upgrade it if you want, but for free, you can go under any of, I would say, 30 different uh, English translations of that particular chapter. It's very instructive, really. Pretend as if you had to give a teaching on a given chapter or a verse even, a word even. <clears throat> look it up, look it up in Strong's Concordance or any other resource and, and um, let the Holy Spirit teach you. He's a teacher, capital T. Yeah, he's the comforter. He's the convictor when we sin. And yeah, we all have sin strongholds. That's why we're doing these days of repentance. But in the meantime, yeah, every time you pick up this beautiful book, the one and only Bible, eternally, the eternal word, he can be your teacher. Ask him to uh, read with you, so to speak. Ask him to be your mentor. It says in Revelation 3.20, and this is the risen Christ to the lukewarm church. There any lukewarmness in you today, please get rid of it. He would rather have you be hot or cold. He wants you to be zealous to repent. How can you do that? Well, spend time alone. Ask him where you ought to begin. Like, like me, you've got stuff. We all fall short of the glory of God, and he calls us to be holy as he's holy. Well, let's get to the word. <laughs> it's good you can interrupt yourself whenever you want. Okay. Matthew chapter two. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem, wow, don't get me started. I've been there. Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king. Behold, wise men from east came to Jerusalem, saying, where is he who's been born king of the Jews? Wow. There's another whole sermon or a book. Daniel, I believe, had planted the truth these holy writings, and they knew from the book of Micah, they knew there was going to be a born, the Messiah in Bethlehem. Where is he who's been born king of the Jews? For we've seen his star in the east, and we come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them, where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him, this is so classic, in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. Yeah, see, they knew. They knew. Micah 5.2. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you shall become a ruler, capital R, who will shepherd my people, Israel. Okay, so then verse seven, then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search carefully for the young child, capital C, by the way. And when you found him, bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. What a liar. Yeah, any lies in your life? I'll tell you real quickly, the Lord convicted me recently. Any exaggeration is a lie. <sighs> Repent, Lord. Really stop me <laughs> exaggerating. <sighs> okay, back to the word. In verse 9, when they heard the king, they departed, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. 
When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshiped him. It's what we're supposed to do right now, every day. It's all about worshiping him. He's worthy. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. By the way, that's why they think there's only three wise men. It doesn't tell you that it was limited to three. Maybe there were 14 of them. We don't know. Does it matter? Uh, no, not in the big picture. Many loved him and knew already that he was the Messiah. He was the king. They were worshiping him that early on in his brief life. <clears throat> Verse 12, then being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod. Thank you, Holy Spirit. They departed for their own country another way. Verse 13, now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I bring you word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Yeah. I love it how the Holy Spirit can be that simple and direct. Now it's up to you and me to obey. And Joseph did obey. He did obey. Look at this, verse 14. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt. Yeah, he didn't quibble. He did the right thing. That's what the Lord's calling you and me to do now. These are the end times. No more gossip, no more dilly-dallying, no, no more lukewarmness. When you hear from the Holy Spirit, and by the way, are you not hearing from him? Ask for that gift. Ask him. Show that your heart would be true, and he can give you that gift. So they departed for Egypt, and he was there. They were there until the death of Herod, that it might be filled, which was spoken by the Lord, through the prophet, saying, out of Egypt, I called my son. This is one of the first of the many times that Matthew, the tax collector, uses scripture to bolster his case, like a good attorney. This is what I've been learning how to do, <laughs> taking up uh, being a pastor the last uh, two decades of my life. My earlier training was as a lawyer. We seek the authority. Matthew uh, here is always where he can, plugging in authority here. That one out of verse 15, um, Hosea 11.1, 1, Numbers 24.8. So then 16, then Herod, when he saw that he was deceived by the wise men, was exceedingly angry, and he set forth and put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem and in all its districts from two years old and under, according to the time which he had determined from the wise men. That is wickedness. That is evil. That is something that human beings can do. Hello. 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 You and I can get to that wicked, evil place. Uh, if there's anything like that in your soul, in your mind, in your heart, as an old rebellious stronghold, please eliminate it today, at, right after you finish viewing this. And verse 17, then was fulfilled what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet. Here he goes again, giving an authority. Verse 18, saying, a voice was heard in Ramah, Lamentation, weeping, and great mourning. Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted because they are no more. Jeremiah 31, 15. And then these last four verses. Verse 19, now when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in e Egypt, saying, arise, take the young child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who sought the young child's life are dead. Again, Joseph obeys. Verse 21, then he arose, took the young child with his mother, and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning over Judea, instead of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And being warned by God in a dream, 
he turned aside into the region of Galilee. Obedient servant. You know, we talk about Mary a lot, and we should. The true Mary, not the fake one. Not the fake apparitions that I'm writing about. But we should also talk about Joseph, the obedient servant, the good father to a young son. And so he turned aside into the region of Galilee and, verse 23, and he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. <laughs> it's out of Judges 13.5. Thank you, Matthew. I want to follow it to some degree in your footsteps citing authority. God bless you. I hope you're blessed. Let's end with a quick prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. It cleanses us. Washing the water cleanses us. The holy water of your word. Ephesians 5, 27, Lord. We want to be a holy, clean bride ready for your soon return as our bridegroom. In Jesus' name, amen.